There was no problem I mean, with recording the talk. Oh, no, no. Okay. All right, so we're going to get started, and I'm really excited that we have uh, Wang So Zhu as our last speaker for the day uh, to talk about um, some cool stuff that has been happening in Veriflow systems. Uh, network verification essentially applied in the real world. So uh, she is both a PhD student uh, at UIUC as well as an engineer in Veriflow, and she's going to tell us about this fantastic story. Without further ado, please, Wang Su, take it from here. Okay, thank you, Marco. Uh, am I heard clearly? Yes. yes. Okay. So, uh, so today I'm going to talk about network verification. I know this is a grand topic, and as the last talk, I will try my best not to run over. So, uh, I'll start with some uh, research aspect and how is this some of the effort being transitioning into industry, and more importantly, we, uh, what we have learned there and uh, ending with some open topic discussion. Okay, so the story really starts as um, today networks are really complex. It's hard to tell if it's doing something wrong. And in fact, very often uh, they are. So uh, we are thinking if we can algorithmically determine what is uh, network is doing, we can eliminate errors. So this is the idea basically means formal verification. So formal verification actually is like this uh, holy grail in computer science that you give me a program, I'll tell you if it has bugs, right? It has uh, had some success in certain domains already, like uh, chip manufacturing or this aerospace. We know NASA has been the leader of the rover uh, software. So what's been exciting is uh, here is that we can bring this technology to the field of networking uh, for the first time. So a little background of networking, just a little. Uh, if you think about the enterprise network today, a typical one looks like something like this. So you have thousands of devices, you've got multiple sites, and there are layers of each site. And you got the uh, ones, you got wireless, you got uh, maybe automation in some software overlay, and so on. So let's zoom into a single box. Uh, my apologies for this because I have to use this PDF version, but you can imagine there's a huge list scrolling from down to up uh, like this. Uh, so these are there are dozens of protocols implementing different features in a single box. This is uh, from a guide of uh, uh, protocols encountered by CCNAs. So it's not like you buy a box, you plug it in, it works. You have to write fairly complicated um, configuration files and push them into the individual boxes, and they collectively run a bunch of uh, distributed protocol, and the output of that computation is something we uh, call network uh, data plan state. Effectively, um, the network data plan state is this uh, a simple program on every device tells it what to do on, in its uh, fast pass when a packet arrives. All right, so this uh, put things together, this is a very complex system. And how do we manage them today? We got manual spell checking, like pings, chase outs. Uh, you can also do monitoring. You watch and see uh, what is happening. But all of these are after the fact. You only see problems after they are already happening, right? So they are not good options. And the result of all this is that uh, network operators today uh, really lack confidence in the changes that th the changes they are making are correct. And a lot of uh, problems actually happen in the context of uh, making changes. So our answer to this is ver network verification. Oh, okay. Uh, so the, um, one way to define that is uh, the process of providing whether or not uh, abstraction of the network satisfies certain properties. So you've got a set of properties, for example, um, host A should be connected to host B, or this should be isolated, or um, no loop should be existing in the network, or uh, all the flows should follow the uh, shortest path. And uh, you algorithmically like, uh, uh, verify reason about those properties within some abstraction. And this uh, abstraction, what this abstraction is, is actually an important decision to design a verification system. Uh, could be, um, we, we could verify the configuration files, assuming the distributed software running it are correct, uh, running it is correct. And we could also do a control software verification. We can verify data plan state or uh, even lower level packet processing behavior 
like the code in a software uh, based uh, switch. So over the past uh, uh, few years, so network verification actually kind of has a blossom as a field. And there are interesting research on each of those abstraction layers. And just to, uh, in order to set the context a little bit more, I'm going to briefly talk through some uh, research in the field of network data plan verification. So in network data plan verification, what we, uh, so we take the network data plan state as input and predict the actual behavior of the network. As uh, because the data plan is sort of like the narrow waste comparing to the control plan, control protocols. So we're sitting there, and then this gives us this uh, 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 uniform way to reason about the control protocols outcome. Okay, so the overall architecture could be something like this. So you got this uh, verifier box this magic box, and you take this uh, network data plan state abstraction, and also some queries, uh, some uh, invariants that should hold on this abstraction as inputs, and uh, produces this uh, diagnosis. For instance, saying um, uh, any packet, whether or not any packet starting at A could reach B. Okay, so then the problem is how do we build this uh, ver magic verifier box? Before uh, talking about the approach, Let's do a little calculation and see how many uh, possible packets can exist in a network. So in theory, if we allow uh, the uh, arbitrary bit mask in the packet, so the number of uh, possible packets should be two to the number of bits in a packet header times the, um, the all the possible places we can inje inject a packet. And assume a 10,000 ports network, we got this huge number. Just for comparison. Okay, so, okay, all right, so what we do, uh, so let's see uh, what it takes uh, to answer an A to B query with such a complex uh, uh, state machine. So A to B query uh, basically means uh, can any packets traverse like a trans, uh, like a came across all the edges between A and B. So if we present the packet as the bit, sequence of bits in the header, and each of those hops transition should be in data plan a forwarding rule with some filter on the packets. And as we assume mid, uh, uh, arbitrary bit mask matching, so each of the filter could be represented as um, uh, a, a Boolean compression, right? So the, to answer the query is equivalent to uh, evaluate this entire Boolean compression is uh, satisfiable or not. So we kind of reduce this to a set problem, and the, it's uh, NP complete. So with this uh, abstract uh, observation, Antiter was proposed as one way of verifying network data plan state. So Antiter expresses both the data plan model and the, the invariants as set formulas, and they use the off-the-shelf set solver to check the invariants against the abstraction. It was uh, uh, evaluated in an uh, operation network and at that time, we re, uh, found 23 variations of these uh, three invariants. So next, we asked ourselves this question that as networks are, uh, keep evolving, so we asked, can we just uh, constantly monitor network and verify it in real time? So in that way, we can block RNS update even reaching the network, from even reaching the network, right? Uh, it's not very simple. We have some challenges. Of challenge one is to obtain this real-time network wide the data plan view. And fortunately, we got SDN to solve that. Uh, and challenge two is about the verification speed. So uh, unfortunately, at the time, uh, there wasn't any uh, techniques prior to Verflow that was fast enough. So what do we do? OK, uh, basically, we follow the same architecture. But this time, in the context of SDN, uh, Verflow serves as the a shim layer between the controller and all the network devices. So how can we verify invariants quickly in this architecture? So basically, Verflow uh, functions by the, uh, using the three steps. First, uh, it in intersects every update that comes from the controller. When it captures one update, it will limit the, search, uh, limit the search space to only the subset of network and the subset of packet header space to limit the uh, the verification effort. So 
and the, the subset of packet that may be influenced by this update are grouped into equivalent classes. So packet within one class will be following exactly the same folding behavior throughout the network. And the folding behavior of each of those class will be modeled as a folding graph, a graph model. And now answering queries uh, to verify invariance is basically as simple as run graph traversal algorithms. So all right, so now we have this uh, real-time verifier. And, but there is a, one caveat here within the model, the, the way uh, Verflow models network. Uh, because here we basically assume network always have this 100% accurate network view all the time. That means updates take effect as soon as they are issued. Uh, this is a distributed system. We know this is not true. Even at the controller, there's a, some uh, kind of uncertainty from uh, uh, the system to, of knowing the network state. So we come up with our next project, uh, models dynamic, this type of, type of network dynamics. So just to illustrate a little bit on this uncertainty problem with an extremely simple uh, uh, example. So say we have this controller and two switches. And initially, we have a rule directing all the traffic from A to B. And for some reason, we want to flip the traffic. So uh, we issue two instructions, remove the original rule and install a new reverse rule. So it's possible that the, the second uh, instruction got installed first, right? So uh, basically, there is a time period that uh, in the, the network state could be one of the four on the bottom. And if we update the controller's view immediately after every update is issued, there could be potential inconsistency between the controller's view and the network state. So this problem uh, is what we call as the timing uncertainty. Uh, and it's also identified by other group of folks, um, for example, consistent updates. And the way CC, uh, CCG addresses this problem is to model this uncertainty. So this, this is a simplified f version that uh, basically we model the network state as an uncertain folding graph whose links are marked uncertain and, or uncertain. So if a link is marked as uncertain, means um, the, 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 verifier, the verifier or the system doesn't yet to know this, um, the status of the update corresponding to this link. So uh, with this uncertain aware of, uh, verification model, we go one step beyond the verification. We now tackle the, the problem of network updates. So it asks, how do I move my network from one snapshot to another snapshot with all the intermediate state uh, satisfying some s given property? So um, the philosophy, be philosophy behind the design is basically, since uh, this is synthesizing a sequence of updates, right? Synthesis is, could be very hard. But verification is relatively easy, especially we have those uh, uh, real-time verifier. So uh, we reduce the synthesis problem into a sequence of verification problem. So in fact, uh, a feasible sequence of synthesis, uh, uh, a feasible uh, sequence should be one that at every moment is verifiable, right? So based on this insight, we uh, CCC runs a Grady algorithm. So for the time, uh, sake of time, I will not go into the detail of this example, but basically it runs this uh, sequence of, uh, uh, so it, it generates the, an update sequence that is uh, fast and also safe with respect to the invariance uh, via repeated verification. And the, the, the outcome would be, it, so uh, CCC only enforces updates order between, like ordering between updates when it matters with respect to the interest of uh, the invariance of interest, and thus it heuristically maximize the update parallelism. Okay, so so far, I've talked a, a few uh, research uh, efforts, and um, some of them have uh, involved into industry products. In fact, there are three startups, uh, to our knowledge that are pursuing this general purpose network verification for enterprises now, including Verflow. Okay, uh, th and this effort has also been adopted by those hyperscale cloud providers like Google, Microsoft, both published a paper uh, on network verification deployments. And uh, also uh, Amazon, uh, I believe last week, just announced that they are verifying their uh, AWS cloud 
uh, networks. Right. So in addition to that, uh, Gartner, oh, uh, you, may, you may not be uh, familiar with Gartner. Gartner is this uh, industry analyst group that uh, evaluates, uh, that does uh, industry uh, technology research that evaluates uh, new technology and provides uh, business advice. So Gartner has been grouping network verification into this uh, new category called intent-based uh, networking. So uh, I'm not going to into a depth here, but the main idea is that um, it's similar to the software-defined networking in the sense that it's uh, making network more and more automated. But uh, the, the difference is that it focuses on high-level end-to-end intents. So uh, we are seeing the, this uh, technology is being recognized as something, hey, this is uh, something really have practical values. So during this process, what have we learned? The, okay, so the first lesson we learned is the need is real. Um, at the, uh, when we started our first project, we, to be honest, we didn't know what to expect. So we know, if, okay, we can take a network, formally model it, verify it, but are we going to capture something that really matters? After all, the, there, uh, there are professionals spend decades to understand their network, right? Um, but when we deploy it in the, in the first network, even as a, a research product, we found the answer is yes. As we show, uh, we did find problems uh, from loops to black holes to, um, you know, uh, security inconsistencies, right? So this really gives us confidence that this automated reasoning uh, can uh, do, can help us to find the problems that are serious. And note that that was uh, six, seven-ish years ago. And today, we are dealing with um, uh, this, uh, so data center, cloud, vans, SDN, whatever comes next, right? So this uh, growth of uh, network complexity has uh, led to more frequent outages, according to 59% of operators we surveyed with. And in addition to that, there are more and more frequent changes happening in the networks. So we have informally talked with many enterprises, and many of them saying there are hundreds to thousands of changes per month to their network infrastructure. Um, and to, to a network at a very large scale like DSAS, uh, it's publicly coded that there are approximately 22,000 of changes per month. However, to manage this such, uh, the, the way people are managing this such uh, uh, complexity and such high volume, volume of changes is surprisingly manual. So when asked uh, how to manage the network to make sure things are going correctly, 69% uh, of the operator respond with uh, manual checks, the pings, trace outs uh, mechanisms. And the next category, most of frequent, uh, most common category is uh, monitoring uh, around 50% range. And um, so as someone from academic to get to know the industry network, I was personally surprised. Um, even for some task we imagine could be simpler, the, the way to manage it is actually manual. So do you know how enterprises map out their network layout? Do you know um, there are networks with more than 80,000 of devices and where the, the practice is drawing the network layout with Visio? So you cannot do the whole thing in one piece, right? You have to do pieces, bits, and uh, in, at the end of the day, you have 80 pages of PDFs, which obviously you cannot use uh, immediately and accurately, and there are errors uh, in the PDF. So in a word, the, the need is real. Okay, so lesson two is uh, uh, we've, we kind of find out where this technique is actually useful in the real world. Of course, there are many use cases. But there are four that comes uh, again and again um, from when we talk with uh, enterprises from uh, financial to government agency to manufacturer to retails. Um, the top one is this availability and resilience. You want to keep your network running, right? You know, um, one common example is uh, as a network operator, you may have your uh, current connectivity working fine, working perfectly. But you may not know that the, the backup path is not usable, is down or is inconsistent. You only find it out when uh, the primary source fails and you fail over and you couldn't do that. So there actually is a, a, was an instance uh, last year with one of the major airlines. 
the uh, primary uh, results went down, so they tried to fill over the disaster recovery system, but didn't work. Okay, the next uh, most common case is the network segmentation. So this this is all about networking, but there are uh, security applications. This is one of them. So uh, many enterprises are moving their security model from this perimeter model where the interior is open to this layers of defense model. Uh, as you kind of have to assume the perimeter can be breached, so you need those layers of isolations, uh, segments, uh, or macro segmentation depends on how fine you draw the boundary, so, right? So it, it is first uh, hard to um, implement it, uh, and second is hard to maintain over the thousand changes months to months. Right. Nobody's going to tell you something is missing because network is functioning, keeps functioning. You only can find it out after six months later you are breached. Okay. So, yeah, the next one, the next use case is uh, compliance. Um, compliance uh, basically brings some uh, regulatory aspect of both uh, a little bit of uh, resiliency and uh, some bit of uh, security. But it also means uh, documenting your network which again is a manual process today. Uh, involves normally, excuse me, sampling uh, five to 10% of network fix, configs uh, and uh, manually check things are going correctly or not. So last one, uh, finally, when something goes wrong, you do want to respond to it res uh, very quickly, right? So that requires you understand your network uh, accurately and uh, more importantly, interactively, right? Okay, so the next thing we learned is about the abstraction we discussed earlier. So um, we find out in the real world, even extracting the, the abstraction, the right abstraction, is very challenging. Let's take a look at the software application for a moment. So it's not easy, definitely, but it's cleanly, uh, relatively cleanly defined, right? You are given this um, uh, program a C program, for example, and you can safely assume this uh, there's a form of specification, specification of this program language. But as we move to the world of networking, there's no universal API to extract states. Uh, one way is SSH of each box and copy the CLS show commands output. There are box doesn't allow SSH. Um, there's no uh, formal specification of how the states related to function. Oh, sorry. There is young Properly subtract the events, work properly skip the events, it's all being semantic plus two. Uh, sorry, which product? Young. 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 Oh. Support uh, for our transfer protocols. Uh, Netcon, RESTCON, GRPC. Okay, thank you. Good to know. I'll, I'll check it out. Yeah, thank you. Uh, right, so uh, there are vendor specific features. Right. Um, just to illustrate more. So inside each box, is the, a box is much more than a set of L3 rules or for, uh, for open flow rules, right? It's uh, actually a stage of pipeline of processing data, how, how data is processed. So this diagram is from Broadcom, uh, as in the show in the diagram. So basically we need to kind of reverse engineer uh, what is here. Um, but there, there's hope as uh, uh, pointed out that um, there are a uh, movement towards APIs, at least the one under, uh, vendor at a time, and there are also products uh, like open config is another. Yeah. Doing young models. Oh, okay. So open config here is uh, one example, but it's open config. To my knowledge, is in its uh, early stages. It's not that wide uh, uh, deployed as enterprise network. Yeah, the, uh, BGP and mm. models are recommended. So there's a, a very good movement in yeah, the industry. Yes. Yeah, which has another 150 models that are widely implemented. Did we say, I missed the, the beginning of your first sentence. Did you say, mm -hmm. oh, Yang is going to solve all our problems because it's implemented on everything? Not all of them. It provides unified level of APIs given the ability yeah, to retrieve data and treat it in the same way. I can still, still argue CLIs that he's commented on later. There are lots of devices that don't support net content. Good example, software switches like OBS only support OBSD, although like, oh, no, you can support net 
then there are a lot of Linux-based configuration where it's where you basically use the Linux APIs once again. And that's not the oh, there's a lot of startups not supporting, but we should treat a lot of that first. Oh, you're saying that's where we should go. Yes. And, and the other problem with Yang, I think it's pointed out here, which is that there's no formal spec to, to say what the semantics are of these values that we extracted via SMMP or NetCom or whatever. They are formal spec. That's what ATF is doing. They are very formal. Uh, no formal specs that are actually correct. Uh, okay. And, and, and specified in a language that is executed. You think it's specified? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm very skeptical of having this, you know, ATF. Well, we also agree that should be the direction to go. Yeah. Uh, fourth lesson lesson is um, uh, one of the prior uh, uh, idea of uh, separating model and the verifier turns out very successful, very powerful in the real world. So since our second uh, second generation of the verifier, we do not only verify. We first build the graph model and then we verify by running, uh, verify the model by running graph-based algorithms, right? So given such a model, you can imagine doing other things uh, other than verify, uh, verification. So you can, uh, of course, visual it, visualize it and search, uh, interactively search it, uh, uh, get access to API to do to, to customized uh, analysis, right? So it turns out from the real-world feedback, um, the way people use verification and technology is not even literary verification. It's um, this uh, various of application that makes the technology powerful in real world. Okay, so the last no, but not least is that we need to shift uh, the way we think about the network. As uh, uh, so, uh, very often today when you talk with uh, operator network operator about their network. Uh, they are viewed in their network as a bunch of boxes. Each box is supposed to do some certain thing. Uh, if you ask them what is this whole network supposed to do, uh, the answer could be something like this box is supposed to have the default route to the gateway, or that this pair of box is supposed to have HSRP, turn down one as matter, one as slave, uh, something like that. But that's not really telling us what uh, this whole network is supposed to do. So we are looking to, uh, for something like uh, this uh, critical serv service is resilient or that the compliance zone is isolated, something like that. So that uh, takes uh, improvements on software to control, to, to verify the network as a whole, but also takes um, to change the way people think about their network. Uh, as we heard this morning, the one big switch abstraction, something like that. We, we should think about the network as one system and with the goal of achieving end-to-end -end intents. Okay, so that's uh, the lessons we learned from the real world. Let's step back to our uh, every tower on the research side. So there have been a lot of activities in uh, the research side uh, on data plan verification, uh, control plan verification, you probably see your name here, right? There are so many of them. And there has been a trajectory, a trajectory that pushing the model to a richer and richer semantic. We have heard, learned something today also on that trajectory, which we find is very interesting. So because uh, we find it's fascinating that the network verification, network, networking actually in this sweet spot, it true is far more complex than a human can uh, reason about. But it uh, still can be uh, formally verified, at least to some extent. So we are uh, excited to see how far we can push the limit. Uh, can we verify SDN controllers, for example? Uh, can we verify every stateful network middle boxes and the interaction between them? Right. The second thing we find would be interesting is uh, moving from verification to remediation. Uh, what does it mean, basically? So we have now this, uh, those nice tools to automatically pointing out errors in your network. But after a problem is identified, humans are brought into the loop to solve the problem, which is not only slow, but also has the potential to introduce new bugs. So there are actually two parts of, to this problem. One is how can we automatically uh, uh, root cause a violation? And so if we see an absence of a data plan path, it could be because of uh, 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 access list shouldn't be applied there, or it's uh, because of uh, as simple as trunk port configuration is wrong. Um, so 
the, the first, uh, first part of the question is, it's very challenging to automatically uh, root about a violation, uh, root cause a violation. And the second part is, um, how can we um, automatically fix a violation? Take automatically, for the system, automatically correct, take corrective uh, actions. We find this, both of them are very challenging and uh, at the same time very interesting. The third one is, uh, can we make it easy for users to express intent? to express what the network should be doing. So the, the system has to know what to verify that. Uh, so as challenging as a sh a shift the way people think about network, this is uh, also difficult, this is also difficult to um, help the oper operators to express their intents in some sort of languages that the verification system also understands. Uh, I guess the research direction, open direction can go on and on, but I will close here and I'll be happy to take questions. Thank you. So we have time for questions. Oh, hi. I have a comment. Yeah. Sure. Moving from academia into real world, there's no open flow out there. It's all dynamic network. Most yeah. So you're going from having forwarding state on centralized controller to an ecosystem with management control mm -hmm. and forwarding place. And forwarding place is still operational state. It's mm -hmm. not known in advance. So you need to be able to verify all three planes against each other, get your derived state, and compare it with intended state. It's somewhat more complicated than just looking at open flow table and saying, hey, it's not going from A to B. Right, just as those uh, the pipeline switch is much more complicated than yes, and there's no no such clear um, division of layers as in SDN as in OpenFlow, right? Uh, Some of the it is a deal, uh, deal, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Right. So again, most people in academia somewhat dislike ATF. We're really doing <laughs> a lot of work in this area, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of progress trying to make internet networks work. We feel grateful to them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so it seems that uh, we